Welcome back to Cool Gaming, episode 5. Today I'm going to be playing Clash Royale, one of the most popular uh, mobile games. Now, for today's episode, I'm going to be playing 2v2s with uh, my friend Nathaniel here. Hello, I'm Nathaniel. And we are going to be doing uh, different strategies that we think are very good for 2v2s. They could be considered uh, somewhat uh, cheaty strategies, in fact. And they're very uh, kind of uh, niche things that are cool to watch in my view. Okay, for the first 2v2 strategy we are going to be showcasing today, we are going to be doing the quadruple battle healer. And what makes this kind of like uh, a cheaty, uh, you know, kind of almost unfair strategy and very entertaining to play and watch is uh, just the outrageous amount of healing that goes in. So let me explain further. Um, according to the uh, Clash Royale fandom Wikipedia, the uh, battle healer, every time it attacks, it heals itself and troops around it. So if you have four of them all attacking and sitting around each other, as you will see coming up in, coming up in the... Uh, match that we play, they will heal a massive amount of health, and they basically will be unkillable. So the, the idea of this strategy is to uh, just basically create a ball, a death ball of healing that will make them invincible, and the opponents won't be able to defend. And we, of course, have some support and cycle cards to go and help out with that. All right, let's get into the game. So here we are in the match, and unfortunately, the uh, footage got corrupted, so I'm just in here on replay mode. I am going to walk through our strategy and what we did during the match. So what we're doing here is we are cycling cards in order to get the correct ones to do this strategy. So what we need is we need Battle Healer and Mirror. And right now we're just going to cycle and defend to make sure our towers don't get destroyed. And pretty soon we will have the correct cards and be able to place them in the back and start the push. And so we place them in the back there. Since so we have three, and there goes the fourth battle here. Another thing you might notice is that we have support cards, support spells actually, like the rage spell and free spell that we just used there. And that's to kind of slow down the enemy to make sure it gives the battle healers time to heal up so that they don't die. And the tornado spell to pull in enemies so that they get hit by the battle healers. And one thing to note is every time each battle healer swings and attacks, it is going to heal 134, and this is according to the Clash Royale Wikipedia page, where it has the statistics for the cards. And so, you'll notice that it's pretty much impossible to kill at this point, because of the massive amount of healing, and that's what makes this strategy so deadly. Here we are with the second strategy this is going to be goblin barrel uh, spam is what we call it basically the idea for this is mirroring goblin barrel and cloning it and raging it and freezing the towers uh, and we do this on the king tower to in order to three crown people fast and this uh, I've played this before and it actually works pretty well some of the time and so we are going to showcase this right now it occasionally works surprisingly well, is how I remember. Yeah, there's sometimes on the first push where you can three crown the enemies. Uh, do you have gotcha. I have to cycle. Okay. Yeah, it does. We both have it. We just have to wait till we have 10 Elixir and then we can cycle this on. 
Our enemies aren't very playing very well, so this is a good sign. And you want to kind of stagger the placement of So there you see we did about 2,000 damage on the uh, tower. 1 to 2,000. And so hopefully we can outcycle them and take out their team tower. We may also need to uh, stagger the barrels a little bit more since they have arrows. Yeah. If this doesn't work, then we should try, probably try and go for a one crown. Right. I'm gonna start. There we go, we took out another chunk of the tower, and next time it should be able to take out. So, so that's how it goes sometimes, but you can see the potential. If they don't have spells like arrows, it should be pretty easy to 3 crown them. Alright, so with the next strategy, what I'm going to be using is my split lane deck. Now, you can only one, run one of these with the 2v2, otherwise it doesn't really work that well. So you want your uh, other teammate to run a normal deck to support this since this is not a very versatile versatile deck it's more of a uh, specialty deck i would say but it does work very well for 2v2s because of its uh, split lane potential So we already did quite a bit of damage to their towers, if you see. One of it's at 2,000, another is at 1,600. However, they also did a significant amount of damage to our towers also. Unfortunately, the uh, video footage corrupted at around this time during the match, so I'm just going to narrate the rest of the match on the uh, replay mode. This time during so they get a little bit of damage in with that Mega Knight. However, I block the Baby Dragon and kill the Inferno Dragon with the uh, Skeleton Dragons. And they can't defend that Goblin Barrel, they don't have anything for it. So it takes their tower. So now we're just saving up Alexer to do one final push and take them out. And then Nathaniel drops a Mega Knight on their wizard. They place another wizard, which is a mistake. 
because the Mega Knight will just destroy it easily. I play some recruits in the back. Nathaniel keeps up the pressure with a princess. They place two very heavy cards, which is not going to be good against this deck because it's going to. We're going to overwhelm them with numbers and destroy them. So we take out the second tower there, and they're getting overwhelmed. Nathaniel uses freeze to make sure our troops stay alive, and there's nothing they can do at this point. They're completely overwhelmed, and we just take them out three from them. And so overall, this strategy was a complete success. You want to keep in mind that you only need one person doing this split lane deck. The other person can just use a support deck, and that's the best way that it works. So another fun strategy that I have found is what we like to call 2v2 random. So basically, you just click this green icon right there and randomize your deck and then play with that. And if you want, you can replace some cards that you don't like. For example, I don't like Furnace, so I'm going to replace that with Mirror just to kind of spice things up. And so basically, you're just playing with a randomized deck trying to beat your opponent. It's surprisingly fun. You don't, it, contrary to what you think, you don't actually lose that many games. Shit, I think I missed. Although they missed some of their spells, so. Genuinely can't tell if that was a negative look situation. <laughs> I do have uh, Royal Hogs, I can mirror that also. I think that might be good. And then you can provide backup with arrows or something. I was thinking I would do uh, mirrored, mirrored Mini P.E.K.K.A. and then behind the hogs, you know? You can try that. Yeah. That's perfect for defending the hog rider. So I'm gonna go on the other side with all 16 hogs. Wonderful connection. So we took it out with a mini pecker. The Royal Hogs also got quite a bit of damage, even though they put Elite Barbarians onto it, which is pretty nice. Pull this back. Perfect. Perfect defense. And we'll even. Oh, no it did not activate King Tower, unfortunately. So we should be able to 3 crown them with this. Questionable Tesla placement, but. So we defended that, they can't break through. Yep, that should be perfect. I'm gonna try the new four hogs again. Arrows it for login. That's pretty bad. Yeah. Well, we won't be able to three crown them, but we did win. I see. So that is the end of the match. This concludes episode five of Cool Gaming. Um, in overall, I would say that uh, most of these strategies worked. However, you aren't going to win every game. There are going to be some games where your opponent just simply hard counters you, where they just, their cards just go against yours and you lose. However, I think that we showcase the fullness of the strategies that we played here. And I would like to give a shout-out to the JHS Creative Communications YouTube channel 
at Jordan High School. And I would also like to invite you, if you want, you can add me here. Here's my uh, my player tag. And if you want to play with me, just join my clan here. I'll show it right here. So if you want to add me, just join this clan. If you want to play with me, just join this clan and you should be able to. Anyways, I hope you all enjoyed this episode and have fun playing Clash Royale and goodbye.